Good evening aspirants, welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankara Ace Academy for the date 26th of May 2023. First of all, I would like to convey my wishes to all the aspirants who are appearing for the prelims examination that is to be conducted this Sunday. Do well, don't panic, you will definitely clear the examination. Also, I have an another announcement for you. There won't be any videos on 27th and 28th of May, that is Saturday and Sunday. We will resume the activities from Monday, that is from 29th May. Okay, here I have displayed the articles we will be discussing today. Now, let's start the discussion. Look at this article. It says that IRDAI is planning to introduce an affordable bundled insurance product called Bima Trinity. This is to address the country's low insurance penetration. In this context, in our discussion today, we will learn about what are Bima Suham, Bima Vahak and Bima Vistara. These three are only called as the Bima Trinity of IRDAI. First, we will see about Bima Sugam. Bima Sugam is an online platform created by the IRDAI, that is the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India. It serves as an one-stop shop for all insurance-related needs such as purchasing policies, settling claims and seeking insurance advice. See, we have Nikya, Mintra or Amazon for all our fashion needs. Similarly, Bima Sugam is a platform for all our insurance needs. Basically, it would be a centralized marketplace where all the insurance products of different insurance companies will be available. Different entities like web aggregators, brokers, insurance agents and bank agents can act as facilitators on this platform and they can sell insurance policies. So basically, it provides a centralized database that helps the consumers with their insurance queries and it also allows them to view policy details and renewal information very easily. This is all about Bhimma Suham. Then we have the Bhimma Vahak. Bhimma Vahak is an initiative by the IRDAI and it is aimed at reaching the last mile of insurance penetration. So how does this work? In each Gram Panchayat, there will be a designated person called a Bhima Vahak. This Bhima Vahak will be responsible for selling and servicing simple parametric bundled insurance products. This initiative actually focuses on women-centric insurance distribution. Also, it aims to build trust and awareness about insurance products in rural areas. We know how banking correspondents work, right? They provide financial and banking services to the consumers in unbanked areas. So we can say that Bhimma Vahaks are similar to the banking correspondents in rural banking but they sell insurance services instead of banking services. This is about Bhimma Vahak. Moving on, let us take Bhimma Vistar. Bhimma Vistar is a special insurance product being developed by the IRDAI. Its main purpose is to provide affordable and comprehensive coverage to people living in rural areas. The focus is on protecting them from natural disasters like flood and earthquake that can cause significant damage. So now, individuals and communities will have financial security during natural calamities. Know that this product will be launched on the Bhimma Sugam online portal. This will make it easier for people to access these benefits. So that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the Bhima Trinity launched by the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India. Now let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Look at this news article. It says that the US Preventive Services Task Force has shared a draft recommendation. It suggests that all women should have breast cancer screening every other year starting at the age of 40. However, in India, we have been following guidelines from the Indian Radiology and Imaging Association. This guideline advises women to begin screening with mammograms every two years after 40. So the new US guideline don't directly affect India. Unfortunately, in India, compliance is the problem because many women only go for mammogram when they notice something wrong. This is about the news article. So in this discussion, we will see about breast cancer. Breast cancer is a complex disease characterized by the uncontrolled growth of cells in the breast tissue. Actually, there are different types of breast cancer. But the most common types of breast cancer are invasive ductal carcinoma and invasive lobular carcinoma. 
in invasive ductal carcinoma cancer cells originate in the milk ducts of the breast and have potential to spread to other parts of the breast on the other hand invasive lobular carcinoma begins in the lobules of the breast and can also spread to nearby breast tissues and other areas of the body now we will see about the signs and symptoms of breast cancer the common warning signs include presence of new lumps in the breast or underarm area then thickening or swelling of particular parts of the breast irritation or dimpling in the breast skin redness or flaky skin around the nipple area nipple pain or retraction nipple discharge and any other change in the shape and size of the breast so it is important to consult a healthcare professional if any of these signs are observed now how it is diagnosed usually mammograms are widely used as a diagnostic tool for detecting breast cancer they are x-ray images of the breast so it can help doctors to identify any abnormalities or potential cancerous growth regular mammograms are considered the most effective method for early detection know that with mammograms often breast cancer can be detected up to 3 years before it can be felt manually basically early detection means easier treatment now we will see about the treatments for breast cancer the treatment for breast cancer depends on various factors including the type and stage of cancer mostly surgery is the common approach which involves removal of cancerous tissue through lupectomy which means removal of tumor or mastectomy which means removal of the entire breast then we have chemotherapy chemotherapy may be recommended to shrink or kill cancer cells using specialized medication these medications may be administered orally or intravenously then hormonal therapy is another option it basically blocks hormones needed for cancer growth then biological therapy works with body's immune system to fight cancer cells or manage side effects from other treatment finally radiation therapy it utilizes high energy rays to destroy cancer cells and it is often used for surgery to target any remaining cancerous cells this is about the treatment for breast cancer so that's all regarding this discussion here we saw about the types of breast cancer its diagnostic method and the treatment available now let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article now look at this article from the text and context page this article gives us a clear picture about the recusal of judges here the term recusal of judge refers to the withdrawal of a judge from hearing a legal case now why is this topic suddenly in news this is because on 10th may 2023 a former supreme court judge justice m r shah refused to recuse himself from hearing a plea moved by former ips officer sanjeev bhat the plea of mr bhat has sought to admit additional evidence in an appeal filed by him in the gujarat high court that is challenging his conviction in the 1990 custodial death case following this plea mr bhat also made another application in the supreme court that particular sought for the recusal of justice m r shah from hearing mr bhat's case mr bhat contended that there was reasonable apprehension of bias by justice shah this was because earlier as a high court judge of gujarat justice shah passed orders against mr bhat while hearing his plea linked to the same 1990 custodial death case so mr bhat made a application in the supreme court for the recusal of justice m r shah However Justice Shah dismissed the plea by stating that this move was an attempt to indulge in bench hunting here the term bench hunting is nothing but the action of the petitioner to get cases heard by a particular judge or court to ensure favorable order so by stating the attempt of bench hunting justice shah dismissed the plea of mr bhat for the recusal of his own this is one case Similarly a few weeks ago the chief justice of india justice dy chandrachud rejected an application that particular application sought the recusal of the cji from hearing petitions seeking legal recognition of same sex marriages so in the backdrop of these two cases only this particular article about recusal of judge has made news today so in our discussion today we will understand the points provided in the article and before that the syllabus relevant to the discussion is highlighted here you can make a note of it now first let us understand the term recusal of judges firstly a judge can withdraw or recuse himself from a case whenever there is a potential conflict of interest here 
द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट कैन अरेस इन मेनी वेज लाइक द पर्टिकुलर जज इज होल्डिंग शेयर इन अ लिटिगन कंपनी और द जज इज हैविंग प्रियर और पर्सनल एसोसिएशन विद द पार्टी एंड सो ऑन सो इन दिस केस द जजस रेक्यूज हिमसेल्फ टू अवॉइड बयास वील डिसाइडिंग अ केस दिस इज वन ऑफ द रीजन फॉर रेक्यूसल Apart from this a judge can recuse himself from a case when an appeal is filed in the supreme court against the high court judgment delivered by the same judge before his elevation as supreme court judge this is also done to avoid bias of the judge these are the two main reasons for the recusal of judges now moving on we will see about the procedure for recusal see there are two procedure for recusal firstly automatic recusal in this case a judge himself withdraws from the case secondly a judge recuses when a party raises a plea for recusal by highlighting the possibility of bias or personal interest of judge in that particular case and note that the decision to recuse rests solely on the conscience and discretion of the judge and no party can compel a judge to withdraw from a case now what happens when a judge recuses himself from a case If a judge recuses himself, the case is listed before the Chief Justice for allotment to an alternative bench. After that, the CJA allots the case to another bench. Note that India has no codified rules governing the recusal process. However, several Supreme Court judgments have dealt with the issue of recusal. Now coming to the next question: Do judges need to record a reason for recusal? As we saw just now. India has no statutory rules to govern recusal process so it is often left to the judges themselves to record reasons for recusal sometimes judges specify the reasons orally in open court while other judges issue a written order by recording the reasons so it is up to the judges to decide whether to reveal the reason for recusal or not now what about the recusal in other foreign jurisdiction unlike india The US has a well defined law on recusal. See, Title 28 of the US Code provides some details about the ground for disqualification of justice, judge or magistrate judge. Such rules are also codified in the American Bar Association Model Code of Judicial Conduct. The Title 28 of the US Code specifies three grounds for recusal. Firstly, financial or corporate interest of the judge in the litigants firm. secondly a case in which the judge was a material witness or a lawyer and finally the judge's relationship to a party so if a judge in the united states is involved in any of these crimes then he should have to recuse himself from hearing the case this is all about the recusal procedure followed in the united states apart from the united states the united kingdom also has laws on judicial recusal and they were evolved through judicial pronouncements Now finally let us see some points about the rules that are formulated by the Supreme Court regarding the recusal of a judge. The Supreme Court has outlined various factors that are needed to be taken into consideration for deciding the impartiality of a judge. The factors were outlined while giving various judgments. Firstly, in the Ranjit Thakur vs Union of India 1987 case, the Supreme Court ruled that the judge should need to look at the mind of the party before him and not to look at his own mind so the supreme court said that if there is a reasonable apprehension of bias in the minds of the litigant a judge should recuse himself from hearing the case secondly in the case of supreme court advocates on record association vs union of india 2015 case the supreme court observed that if a judge has a pecuniary interest no further enquiry is needed to decide whether there would be a bias or not so if a judge is having some interest in any of the litigants firm there is no enquiry needed to prove the bias so the judge has to recuse himself from hearing the case however in other cases the supreme court said that the enquiry is required to prove real danger of bias from the judgments it is clear that if a judge is having some interest in any of the litigants firm then the judge has to recuse himself from hearing the case whereas in other cases it is up to the judge to decide on recusal so that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw the background of the reason why recusal recently made news 
then we saw about the provisions in india then we saw how the process is followed in the foreign countries finally we saw the supreme court judgments regarding the procedure for recusal i hope this discussion was helpful now let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this news article the news article reports that four members of the bakarwal family a nomadic tribe of jammu and kashmir were killed when a tree fell on their tent in this context let us learn about the bakarwals the bakarwals are a nomadic ethnic group they primarily rear goats and sheep in the high altitudes of the great himalayan range during summer during winter they move to the plains and the foothills of the shivalik mountains due to this migration only we call them nomadic group this migration is driven by the need to find suitable grazing grounds and better living condition for their livestock which is basically sheep during the harsh winter months the kashmir valley experiences extreme cold and heavy snowfall this makes it difficult for the bakarwals to continue their pastoral activities therefore they migrate to the warmer regions of the jammu here the climate is more favorable for their sheep and it also provides them with better access to food and shelter so in jammu the bakarwals settle in the plains and hilly regions where they can find ample grazing land for their sheep they establish temporary settlements and make use of available resources to support their livelihood during the winter months these settlements are often consisting of tents and temporary shelters that can be easily set up and dismantled as they move as the winter season comes to an end and the weather becomes more favorable the bakarwals make their way back to the kashmir valley for the summer season in short we can say that the bakarwals are mostly goat herders and shepherds and they move from one place to another with their herd seasonally see the bakarwals are listed as a scheduled tribe in the indian union territory of jammu and kashmir and in ladakh they are the largest muslim tribe in india and they are the third largest ethnic community in jammu and kashmir region apart from the indian union territory of jammu and kashmir and ladakh you can also find bakarwals in the afghan province of nirustan the bakarwals play a significant role in the economy and culture of the regions where they reside their experience in herding and their knowledge of the land are vital for their survival and the well-being of their communities they sustain their livelihood based on animal products they get from their cattle okay that is all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw the basic things you have to know about the bakarwal tribe for prelims examination now let us conclude this and take up the next news article Look at this article here it says that the food safety and standards authority of india will conduct nationwide surveillance this year this surveillance is aimed at curbing the adulteration of milk and milk products in both organized and unorganized sector this is about the news article in this context let us learn about milk adulteration and then about fssca let's start with milk adulteration milk adulteration refers to the process of intentionally degrading milk quality This is done either by adding some inferior products like water or by removing some valuable ingredients like butter. In India, milk adulteration has become quite common where it is being done to increase the quantity of milk and to make profit illegally. Some adulterants like water, urea, detergents, starch and synthetic milk are used to adulterate the milk in India. If we look at the data the results of National Milk Safety and Quality Survey 2018 showed that 12 out of 6432 samples of milk were found unsafe for human consumption due to adulteration the world health organization has warned that if milk adulteration in india is not stopped a significant proportion of the population might face life threatening diseases by the year 2025 now who is responsible for checking the milk adulteration in india the food safety and standards authority of india is the authorized government body that checks food and safety regulation in india it is the fssaa that conducts surveillance on adulteration of milk in india now let us see some points about fssaa fssaa is an autonomous cum statutory body established under the food safety and standards act 2006 it is functioning under the union ministry of health and family welfare and it is headquartered in new delhi the primary responsibility of the fssaa is to lay down science based standards for articles of food 
Apart from this, FSSAA also regulates manufacture, storage, distribution, sale and import of food items. This is to ensure the availability of safe and wholesome food for human consumption. Now we will see the organizational structure of FSSAA. The FSSAA comprises of a chairman and 22 members. Of the 22 members, one third should be women. The chairperson and the members of FSSAA are appointed by the central government. This is about the organizational structure. Moving on, let us see about the functions of FSSAI. Firstly, it frames regulations to lay down the standards and guidelines for food safety and for laboratories in food businesses. Secondly, it grants food safety licenses and certification for food businesses. Thirdly, it provides suggestions to the government in framing the policies related to food standards. Fourthly, it collects data regarding contaminants in food products and identification of emerging risk. And fifthly, it creates an information network across the country about food safety. And finally, it promotes general awareness about food safety and food standards. So that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we covered the basics of milk adulteration and about the organization called FSSA. Now, with this, let us conclude the news article discussion session and take up the practice prelims questions. We have four practice prelims questions today. Let us see them one by one. Let us take up the first question. With reference to the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India, which of the following statements is incorrect? First option, the nodal ministry of IRDAI is the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. This is incorrect because the nodal ministry is Ministry of Finance. Other than this, all the three statements given here are correct. IRDAI is a 10-member body. As per IRDAI, third-party liability insurance is mandatory for all vehicles playing on public roads in India. IRDAI adjudicates on disputes between insurers and intermediaries. Since they are asking for the incorrect statements, the correct answer here is option A. Moving on to the next question. This is a pair-based question. On one side, tribes are given and on the other side, states where they are located is given. See, if you have been reading the newspaper daily or if you have been watching our news analysis daily, you would be knowing that the Maitai tribe is from Manipur and not from Gujarat. Other than that, from our discussion, we know that Bakarwals are from Jammu and Kashmir and Irulas are from Tamil Nadu. Since only two pairs given here are correctly matched, the correct answer is option B, two pairs only. Moving on to the next question. It is a three statement question about FSSA. Let us take up the first statement. It is functioning under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. This statement is incorrect. FSSA is functioning under the Union Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Okay. Moving on to the second statement. It may issue guidelines or orders from time to time for ensuring the safety of food imported into India. This statement is correct. It is one of the functions of FSSA. Now moving on to the third statement. It grants food safety license and certification for all food businesses. This we saw in the discussion itself. Third statement given here is correct. Since statements 2 and 3 are correct and since they are asking for the correct statements, the correct answer here is option B, 2 and 3 only. Moving on to the last question. This is a quiz question for you. This is based on our breast cancer discussion. Okay. Interested aspirants can post the answer for this question in the comment section. The main question based on today's discussion is displayed here. Interested aspirants can write the answers and post it in the comment section. If you like today's video, like, comment and share it with your friends. For more updates regarding UPC preparation, subscribe to Shankara Ace Academy's YouTube channel. I am reiterating the announcement. On 27th and 28th May, there won't be any news analysis video. We will resume the process from 29th May. Okay? Thank you.